Kyle Loomis, uh, Auburn uh, takes it uh, on the chin on the Plains. That's twice in three weeks. Kyle, you can join him on E2C Network. Kyle, what's going on today? A lot of feels, man. A lot of feels around the Plains. I'm actually on the Plains right now. Uh, stayed over this week uh, for uh, what's going to be a big matchup for Auburn and Oklahoma. First time for the Sooners coming uh, to the loveliest village on the plains. So uh, I'm here. That's why the backdrop's a little bit different. It's probably why I sound a little bit different too. Wore myself out. I think we're all a little bit worn out after uh, the performance of the Tigers over the last couple of games. <laughs> Our uh, uh, expert picker, uh, Steve Merrill from Wager Talk. Uh, he's phenomenal. He came into this year like 21 and five against the spread under the radar selections. He was so confident Auburn was going to win this game and cover the spread that uh, that's what his simulation is. 10,000 simulations told him that they were like a touchdown better than Arkansas. And then that two and a half point spread wasn't even close. And right. Yeah. Uh, I think we all thought that. I think Arkansas fans, the ones that were reasonable, even thought that they would probably walk out of here with a loss, albeit a close loss. And uh, I did also think the line was pretty accurate uh, two and a half to three that um, Auburn would get the win in Jordan Hare, just because of the uncertainty of the offense and the quarterback situation. I think what we have here, Mark, is a sobering uh, coming back to earth for a lot of the Auburn fan base, uh, a lot of people who had uh, sold themselves that Hank Brown was the savior from Peyton Thorne and the hate that they had built around him. Uh, but the reality is, is Auburn's quarterback situation is still far from figured out. Hank Brown has an abysmal day, only makes it out of the first half, three interceptions, no touchdowns, and it's a complete juxtaposition to what we saw versus New Mexico to now Arkansas. And, and I cautioned our viewers to really take stock of who we were playing against in New Mexico and what he was able to do, not taken away from, you know, celebrating his performance, giving you know pats on the back for what he was able to do in his first official college football start. That in and of itself is just difficult. But you're now moving on to the SEC. And even if it's the bottom of the SEC or supposed bottom of the SEC at that time, you are playing a team that has SEC caliber talent on defense. And they will show it, especially when they have nothing. Well, I wouldn't say nothing to lose, but this was a matchup of who is going to fall into the bottom of the SEC with your Floridas and your Mississippi States and your Vanderbilts right now. And I'm sad to say that Auburn's now at that bottom, uh, at least for this part of the season. And there's not a lot of optimism that it's going to get better when you talk to the general fan base right now. Peyton Thorne came back into the game, hit some passes, but uh, it didn't last for long, but did uh, put together the one drive that made it, I believe, 17-14. Yeah, tied it up a couple of times, but then I think it's a little bit too late. One of the things that I think uh, is encouraging for Peyton is that he came into this opportunity. I, I hate switching back and forth of quarterbacks. In fact, when this, even though I'm more, I was more of a Peyton Thorn guy, when the swap was made to Hank, I didn't want it to swap back again because I, I just I don't think that creates continuity. I think that rarely ever works. So I, I was a little, I want to say frustrated, but I was just kind of like, eh, I don't know if I like this, but obviously to Peyton's credit, uh, came in and gave uh, Auburn an opportunity to compete. And there's a lot of Auburn fans that are having a lot of egg on their face. There's a lot of humble pie going around in the stadium for all the booing uh, that he was getting when he was leading the charge back for this team to be able to have a shot to beat Arkansas at their home. It's there's just a lot of frustration on the campus right now. And, you know, there are other things going on. There's been back and forth play with the defense, a major injury on our defense during the game. Champ Anthony broke his uh, essentially his leg and is out for, I would assume, the rest of the year. Uh, but it's 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 interesting right now on the planes. I chose a great week to spend some extra time down here. <laughs> Kyle Loomis here, E2C Network. Uh, Kyle, has Hugh Freeze made any kind of commitment to the quarterback situation? Mm. He has, at this of this time, no. He has talked about a lot who is going to prepare the best for Oklahoma, uh, them presenting a lot of challenges uh, for a quarterback, you know, for an offense facing them. Uh, who prepares the best for them, who responds best to the scout team, uh, which is being run by Walker White, you know, which is a, one of our newer uh, quarterback commits, which now people are starting to shift their commentary that he should start. Uh, I think we're, we're, we're that's a little bit too grasping for straws at this point. But, um, yeah, I think right now there's no commitment to that. 
I don't know where to lean, to be honest with you. Um, as I said, I hate swapping back and forth, so my inclination would be just keep it with Hank Brown. But uh, you got to give Peyton credit. Came in and did something that wasn't heading in the – turned it around and heading in the right direction. But as of this time, there does not appear to be a commitment at quarterback. We probably won't know till game time. Oklahoma comes to town, and, uh, of course, Auburn faces a new conference foe. Mm -hmm. Historic game in regards to yep. just two major brands getting together for, uh, obviously, this was not a game that we saw frequently in the past. We saw them get together in the 2016 Sugar Bowl after mm -hmm. the 16 season. And uh, here we go. And the way these two teams are playing offense uh, – Six to three, nine to six. What is the score <laughs> going to be? Because Oklahoma's offense looks like complete. Um, will be kind. It's it's struggling right now as yeah. well. Yeah, that's encouraging for us right now. Uh, in fact, that we ran our college football twenty five uh, simulation. I think the score was fourteen to nine Oklahoma, which a lot of Auburn fans respond said which sounds accurate, and I think Oklahoma fans would re uh, respond to that as well. They've just changed their quarterback. Two teams definitely struggling on offense. You got to think when you, I think the line when it was um, brought out was Oklahoma by three points or something. I don't know if that shifted uh, since they that makes a lot of sense because Auburn obviously uh, with their offense, even at home, has just been abysmal at times. And then now you've got an Oklahoma team, even if they are the Oklahoma of old or just at least more formidable. They're coming into this first-time environment here at Jordan Hare. And I know while the results don't show it, this is an incredibly tough place to play and have success. If you need proof, talk to Georgia, talk to Bama, and that's straight from their coach's mouths. Well, at least the Alabama, their former coach's mouth. So, you know, I'd like to say I'm super hopeful about this Oklahoma game. It is one that I picked that we would win in, what at that time, what would have been an upset and still would be. Uh, but right now it could be just the defense. And with DJ Durkin, who has shown he can make great adjustments if they do get off to a hot start here in Jordan-Hare, um, I think that Auburn has still a good position to win this game, albeit not from the offensive standpoint, maybe just from the defensive standpoint. I think the collective expectation nationally and within the Auburn community from a reasonable aspect before the season was eight and four. Mm -hmm. You could have stretched that to nine and three, but that eight and four, nine and three included wins over Cal and Arkansas. Yep. Now you're down two and you move on to the tougher portion of the schedule. So what's the reasonable expectation now? That's a great question, and I think that's where we're all uh, trying to figure out at this point. I think that's where the frustration amounts to is the reality setting of what is or isn't possible or what is most likely. When I was getting you know, asked every day during the offseason, what's your record prediction? What's your record prediction? I would talk about this bell curve where at the top of the bell curve is the most likely uh, scenario, and I felt like that was eight and four. And then obviously as you go down the bell curve on either side, you know, you get more losses or more wins. That bell curve has definitely shifted now to the most likely being probably uh, in this closer to the six and the seven range in terms of wins. Uh, this these two losses at home drastically change what is pot what is the highest possibility for Auburn. I I hate the term must win because I think it's just overused and hyperbolic in, in my opinion. But I think this Oklahoma game is a must win for Auburn to secure bowl. Um, chances because then if you think about it that way you have three wins you've got three more at home where you can hopefully put something better together throughout the season and still use utilize your home field advantage and get those six wins to go to a bowl game because the away schedule which is where a lot of the skepticism came in about the year originally and should georgia alabama missouri and kentucky who you just you just never know i mean they'll put together something great like they did against georgia and then they'll you know use the litter box, I guess. I don't know. I was trying to think of a better terminology for cats, but um, it, it really, I really don't know, Mark. I, I think my original prediction of eight and four is highly unlikely at this point. So I, I would at least shift it down to a seven and five year at best. Kyle Loomis, e to C Network. It's Auburn football, Auburn athletics, the community, the culture, everything going on at uh, Auburn University. And before we let you go, is anybody playing good football on this team? Is there anybody yeah. to highlight on either side of the ball? Well, I'd, I'd like to give a shout out to the person who was injured, Champ Anthony, who laid one of the greatest hits that we've seen uh, 
at, as of late. I don't know if you've seen the Junior Rose Green hit from days back against Georgia where the guy just gets laid out in the Auburn game. It was it was that. He was playing great in this game, so it just terrible that he had an injury happen. And literally after, right the play after, he made that great play. Uh, I think there are uh, some players that are playing well. Keandre Lambert-Smith is one of those that – what a refreshing thing to bring in a transfer wide receiver from a major program and he'd be legit. Uh, he's responsible for the two touchdowns from Peyton Thorne. And um, he's definitely lived up to the hype. And I, I think we thank the Penn state fans for, you know, not overselling him. We would get people on our show from Penn state say, you guys don't understand. You're getting a great one. And I was like, well, we've heard that before, <laughs> but he, he is definitely living up to the hype on the offensive side of the ball. I think uh, <clears throat> Jarquez Hunter is again, uh, working as hard as he can had a few fumbles this year, which has been frustrating, but overall, I think he's been having an okay year given what the opportunities that he's been given as well. And uh, defensively uh, you've seen some great moments from a Keldrick Falk, um, you know, a few of our edge rushers, but it, you know, unfortunately I think most of these things are being lost in Auburn fans right now because of the crashing down to reality that are happening right now. There's still good football being played. It's just maybe more so individually than as a team. Once again, catch Kyle right here on YouTube, E2C Network, Everything Auburn. Kyle, appreciate you stopping by, breaking things down for us, and uh, good luck getting that first uh, SEC win. <laughs> it's going to be a tough one, but we're ready for it. War Eagle.